Hi, my name is James Barrow, and I'm here with Jothan Frakes, the COO of Minds and Machines. What does this mean in practice? Well, it's a wonderful opportunity to cover the broadest space of things that need to get done. I mean, in essence, it's the white space on the org chart. The, the areas that need to get accomplished, I make sure they get done. Um, and it's an opportunity to take the experience I have in the industry and uh, provide strategic input as well. And what kind of experience do you have in this background? Have you worked with you know, numerous new TLDs coming to market? Well, I've been doing this since 1994, so about 15 years. And one of the, I've got a diverse background in this. I'm, I've worked from registries to registrars and advertising and the full gamut. Uh, aftermarket of domain names. So I have a, a very diverse perspective on um, the various different elements of the industry. Uh, I operated .cc as the chief technical officer and we set up that registry in 1997. Um, later sold that to VeriSign in 2001. I worked for VeriSign uh, up until about 2004. Then I started uh, a domain industry conference called the Domain Roundtable. Uh, and I ran that for a couple of years. Then started in 2006 a conference called Domain Fast. Uh, I later was doing uh, registry liaison work for one of the top 10 uh, ICANN accredited registrars and uh, also helped launch uh, a live auction platform for a company called Snap Names. So a, a broad perspective on the industry in general. It was interesting you just brought up live auctions. I know a lot of people have spent six figures for a .com name. Uh, should they be worried about this new round of TLDs? I don't necessarily think so because there's, a, you know, there's still a, a slight horizon to it, but I'd be keeping my eye on the process and uh, you know, fortifying whatever investments I might make with you know, what, what an approach and strategy might be with new top-level domains. You know, for example, if you've bought a high-traffic domain name in a specific sort of vertical marketplace, it might be good to reinforce that and, and maybe even consider a top-level domain in that space to help fortify that position. Recently I saw that you did a deal with a packet clearinghouse for DNS. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? I can. Um, we, we have partnerships with a variety of different providers. Um, in this case, we needed it as sort of a default provider. And in, uh, packet clearinghouse was absolutely willing and in fact uh, almost insisted to do some things to help with um, uh, energy emission, carbon emission, things that would have to do with some environmentally sound practices in operating the infrastructure. They also have data centers, uh, 40 different data centers that were immediately located in. And it gave us an opportunity to have a very high quality, secure, stable environment for the resolution systems for the new top level domains that we'll be managing. So we were very pleased about this. Um, and is DNS included in the price? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and there's flexibility there as well because we have so many partners who offer DNS services. We can complement them with what we offer. We can have the TLD operator use their own if they choose. Uh, some corporations, for example, may want to operate their own. And we can partner with other people as well. But, but by default, we wanted to make sure and have a very stable and strong uh, uh, DNS solution in place and not have it be a sort of a surprise factor to the price. So when we're talking about the, the, the pricing and what we're going to be doing with people, that it's really clear that there's no you know, surprise added costs when we sit down to talk about what the fees will be. And are you guys capable of, uh, I guess, you know, uh, servicing any of my needs when it comes to starting a new TLD? Is that why you've gone out and made these partnerships with Packet Clearinghouse? Absolutely. Uh, we, we are there to help you with a new top of the domain, clear from you know, discussing what the plans will be, helping you uh, in discussions with, uh, you know, investors, uh, business plans, things of that nature. Uh, but we will help with the, apl uh, the application and we will help with the operation of the TLD. We're there as partners to share our experience and help it be a very good process and a, a positive experience. Internationalized top-level domains use non-Roman characters. Are you going to support those? And can you give me some examples? Oh, certainly. Um, I have quite a bit of experience with this. I actually launched one of the first uh, CCTLDs with internationalized domain names with .cc back in the year 2000. And the, uh, there are some distinct challenges in, in uh, launching 
and working with a new top level domain in another language. But for people who type on a keyboard and don't want to switch composition between Romanized uh, characters and their native language, if it's something that is non uh, ASCII, um, it's actually going to be pretty beneficial. And we're able to do all of that. We have experience in, um, in working with the different standards that are, have evolved, and we're in constant dialogue with the people who are setting the standards to make sure that we are at the cutting edge of that. Um, what's, what's interesting is not only that we have an internationalized approach and are compatible and can do internationalized top-level domains, but the infrastructure to manage the actual um, uh, top-level domain at the registry level can be done in different languages. Right now we support 15 different languages, but we'll be able to skin it so that it can support whatever language you like. So we're, we're thinking about it in terms, obviously, of the large customer experience and you know, how people would use the names. We're also thinking in terms of making sure that your, your team, if you're applying for a new top-level domain, can help manage that in their language, in their natural language as well. Is there a market for these new TLDs, and um, how have some done them in the past, and how many registrations can one in the future expect to get, and what sort of the historical data? Well, that's a lot of questions in one, but I, I'll, I, I think there's absolute demand. And you can, you can take a look at um, the demand for new top-level domains, I would say, would easily translate from something like the, uh, the explosion and popularity of Twitter, for example and wanting to get that distinct name after the, the you know, twitter.com slash whatever. If that were a domain name, that would be entirely uh, massive. Uh, Facebook is the same. They, they, up until recently, you had some sort of a numeric user ID, and you wouldn't really be able to provide a URL that made sense to people so that people could come and look at your Facebook profile or connect with you from high school or however you were you know, providing your Facebook URL. Um, I, I had a conversation earlier today with folks uh, at Facebook, and they confirmed that they have now 73 million people signed up for their custom address on Facebook. Now, if that doesn't illustrate that there might be some demand for people to have their own unique identifiers, uh, I don't know really what would. In terms of previous TLDs, um, can you give me examples of generic ones and how many registrations they've actually sold? Oh, sure. Um, Info is a good example. They were launched in 2000 after uh, the first round of new top-level domains. And they are quite high in the high millions. Uh, I think that they are a good example of a TLD that has had some success um, you know, over a course of time. And they've had an opportunity to try a variety of different methods to make sure that those come out into the marketplace. Uh, that museum is an entirely different version, um, maybe less based upon the quantity of registrations is the quality experience for people. So in .museum, they don't have as many registrations, but they have certainly had a successful top-level domain because they're doing what they intended to do, is make sure that there is a user experience that can help people find museums online. So the mileage varies on the answer, candidly. <laughs>